we had a tech contest design survey and we do have a winner now who is um, Lily Ingram. So I'll be emailing Lily and calling her guardian later today. Uh, so she has won the $50 Amazon gift card and that tech contest properly is happening in October. Um, we're planning a whole month around tech. So we'll have a lot of local tech companies involved in that. And you'll be actually uh, building an app um, with the help of, of role models, of course. And I'm 90% sure that uh, Leslie Chard is planning on using Canva uh, for that, that STEM skill activity. So you're getting a head start by being here on the contest that's coming up in October and there'll be a lot more happening um, just in, in tech in general. Of course, if you're just joining us for the first time like this month with STEM for Girls Club, there's there's materials that go up every month. July is a bit of a anomaly in terms of it, it, there being a lot of content being released this month, but there's always some content released every month. Um, this just happens to be the, the biggest month of the year for us. Uh, and in other housekeeping, as we go through this, uh, maybe you won't finish everything today. Maybe you'll have questions later on. I think Mary and Cherise will cover this, but just a heads up that they are back with us on Thursday, 1 p.m. Um, Newfoundland Daylight Time or 1230 in Labrador. Um, so we'll explore more of their career decision making processes as we've done with many role models in the in the past, but you'll also be able to just ask them questions about um, Canva and graphic design on Thursday as well. Um, and through doing this workshop, you're actually going to, to have a tangible product at the end. You're going to create something in Canva. Um, and when you submit your content by August 5th at the latest, uh, you will get gamification points for that as well. So heads up there, you're going to get 50 gamification points for, for submitting a product out of this today. Um, yeah, I think that's everything for me for now. I'm sure uh, I'll be back around and I will be here for the full time. I'm actually interested in learning how to use Canva myself because that's a that will be a new skill for me. Uh, and with that, I will hand it over, although maybe perhaps I should introduce Mary McDonald, Senior Lead Community Program Delivery um, at PINWA, and Sharice Richards, who is the Senior Digital Skills Educator at PINWA Association. Thank okay. you, Trina. <laughs> That's a mouthful, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, I thought we'd start with introductions really, really brief for ourselves, and then we'd love to hear from you. If you're able to, please put on your camera if you'd like to. Again, it's only being recorded for internal, but it's up to you. We also understand if you can't or don't want to. Um, and feel free to unmute at any point, and, um, and we'd love to hear from you what your, you know, a little bit about you, maybe just your name and what your, although we can see your names, but um, I love the fact that everybody wears a virtual name tag. It's helpful, but... <laughs> Um, but maybe just a little bit about yourself, what you're really interested in or, you know, why you're here or what you hope to learn. And um, so I'll start really quickly. I'm, uh, my name is Mary. I'm a media artist on the side. And uh, as I was sharing with Trina, I'm also have a new house with a garden. So I'm venturing into the brand new world of planting uh, gardens and native plants and things. And uh, for Pingua, I've been working with Pingua and traveling with Pingua. I've been very, very lucky to go to Nunavut and Nunavik and work in communities to teach uh, and share digital skills. So I'm really excited to be here and to work with you and so glad you're here. Thank you. I'll pass it over to Sharice and then maybe Sharice can call out names and everyone can take turns introducing. If you can't introduce yourself verbally for whatever reason or don't want to, please do it in the chat. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Trina. Hi, everyone. My name is Sharice. So I'm pleased to meet all of you. Um, <clears throat> so basically, I have a background in adult education, adult education and digital technology. Um, 
as a youth, as always, I always loved gadgets and all those cool, fun stuff. And then I um, also worked with YTV, Chatelaine Magazine, City TV. Um, I have an eight-year-old son. He loves to code. He's into 3D model printing. And um, I, I, I'm just happy to be here and to meet all of you. So I'm going to choose somebody now. Um, feel free. I hope you feel comfortable to share. As Mary said, you don't have to have your camera on, but we'd love to see your beautiful smile. Uh, how about Lexi Burry? I have a cousin named Lexi. <laughs> Lexi, so that's why I, I chose you today for the sharing circle. Oh, I don't see your mic on though, Lexi. Let's see in the chat there. Are you there, Lexi? Okay, maybe I'll choose somebody with, uh, we can always come back around if you feel comfortable. Somebody who has their mic on, Alyssa Hillier. Did I pronounce that correctly, Alyssa? Are you there? So again, if you can't or don't want to introduce yourselves um, out loud here, please please put it in the chat if you want to. And um, maybe, Sharice, do you think maybe we could just offer anybody who would like to could just start? I was going to suggest that okay. whoever feels comfortable yeah. to just jump on in, just jump on yeah. in. You don't even have to turn on your camera just to say a quick hello, you know, and what you're hoping to maybe get out of today. Okay, well, that's okay. Um, if you want to introduce yourself in the chat, that's great. And welcome. We're so excited that you're here. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to dive right in. And just in case anyone missed it, you do want to have Canva open. And you, so if you're working on a mobile device, you'll need a mobile app. Um, and you'll need to create a free account. Uh, we're also going to be doing a quick concept sketch. So you'll want a pencil and some paper maybe to do your quick concept sketch. And those are the materials you need. And you also, you're intellectually, you need, uh, you need to think about a topic that you're really passionate about, that you want to share information about. Um, so that's what you're going to need. And we're going to go over, uh, let's see, I just want to make sure that I tell you that if you have a question, it's really important that we get to that question right away. So please feel free to unmute and ask that question as soon as you have it. If you want to, doesn't matter if you interrupt, we, we want to know what your questions are and don't feel hesitant because if you have that question, I'm sure someone else does as well, either in the group here or maybe someone who would be watching um, the recording later. Um, and so please, please make sure that you do that. We're going to be doing um, an infographic today. And we chose that because uh, that's a, a kind of uh, design you can create with, create with uh, graphic design that really uses a lot of the different features. So we thought it was A, kind of interesting and B, kind of the best way to learn your way around Canva because you incorporate a lot of elements. Uh, as you're moving forward, I want you to think about whether the one that you submit to, um, to the contest afterwards, if you're going to be printing, if that would be ideally printed out. So would it be a hard copy design or would it be a digital design? Because again, your design um, choices that you make all the way through are a little bit different for digital sharing versus print sharing. And we've heard that you can already, uh, already heard from Trina that you can submit whatever you make um, by, I think it was August 5th. Uh, to win even more points. And that sounds really, really cool. I'd love to win one of those <laughs> lovely prizes. It sounds like a great prize. So hope that you can do that. And today you might finish something that you want to actually submit today. You might also want to kind of practice and learn and then create that in your own time afterwards. And, and any which way around is fine. And I think that's, a, and Sharice, I think is getting ready to show a slide deck that we'll begin with. Just to give you an overview, we're going to do a bit of a slideshow about graphic design in general. 
And then we're going to do um, start the activities. We're going to do like a quick concept sketch. And this is very hands on. It's not just watch us. We want you to be doing as well. Um, so it will be a quick concept sketch. And then we'll be working together to create something in Canva sort of as a prototype. And then we'll create again in Canva using um, different, different of the elements, different elements. And then if you want to share what you've done at the end, that would be great. And if not, that's okay too, but you can, we're looking forward to see what you submit. Hopefully you'll share it with us as well. All right, this is all set. So there is a question there. Um, oh, Tiffany is asking, does it have to be a problem related topic? Oh, excellent. Thank you, Trina. Um, it does not have to be a problem related topic. It can just be, it can, but, um, but it can be anything that you want to share information about that about, and that may not be, may not be a problem. It might just be something that you're celebrating or want to share about. So, or in, or teach about. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. A hobby or a passion would be fabulous. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Great ideas. All righty. Okay. I'll pass it over to Sharice. Thank you so much. And we appreciate that question is like the more questions, the better. Um, the great thing that I actually love about Canvas, I don't know if anybody here has been in the situation. Sometimes you may be thinking, man, I wish I could create like a cool poster to get, you know, something that I'm passionate about across. Or maybe you've been in a situation where you think, you know, I want to create like a Christmas card or something to give a loved one um, or for another holiday. Like there are just so many different times when I've been in certain situations before, but I thought, you know, like I don't have in-depth, in-depth, this was during high school, so I don't have in-depth graphic design. But the great thing about Canva before taking any particular graphic design courses is that it's very, very easy to use. It's very, very um, friendly to just the average person who may not have graphic design skills. So um, we're going to look at the basics of graphic design as well as Canva. So a brief overview that we're going to talk about is what is graphic design um, and the creative process that actually takes place in order to um, create design projects. We're going to talk about some things such as layout and composition, which are specifically important to the field of graphic design. And it helps your, um, your image or something that we called artifact to be a lot less more, um, pardon me, to be a lot more um, visually appealing. We're going to also speak about color and where we can get materials to utilize. Okay, so first off, what is graphic design? So graphic design is the art of using visual elements, typography, so um, text and fonts and color to convey a message. It's about communicating, interpretation and attraction. So when you think about maybe, you know, driving and you might see a big billboard, I think about um, downtown Toronto. Uh, there are a lot of places where you can see big images and, you know, the graphic designers, they spend a lot of time thinking about how they want things to look visually, what types of colors will attract people and how to get their particular messages across. And there is a creative process that's also involved in graphic design. So the creative brief, it helps us understand the project between the client and the designer. So I'm not sure, maybe as a career, some of us may be interested in, you know, going into um, the field of graphic design. I don't know if there's anybody that'd like to share if they're passionate about that in the chat. Um, you can do it as a side project, or you can also, you know, get your resumes out there and apply to um, places where you can actually work as a graphic design. So graphic designer. So you have the option to do it freelance or to actually work with the company. Um, but these things are important to know because it's the fundamentals. And so the basics of what you would need to do um, in order to make sure that the process is done correctly. So when you understand this process, it sets out the objectives and the scope of the project. So what the client needs, as well as um, the time frame that they need it in. It's also going to identify something called the lifespan of the project and any constraints, meaning any issues that may come up. And I will show you that um, 
a little bit more in depth afterwards. You also want to get to know your client. So for example, if, you know, you have a client that says, can you design something for my business? You're going to want to ask them, you know, what sort of things do you like in terms of, do you have a slogan? Do you have a particular um, message that you'd like to get across? What colors maybe are related to your business? All of these things are very, very helpful. And when you're thinking about yourself, something that you're designing, you are the client. So that's kind of nice in the sense that for the infographic today, you can choose the colors, um, you can choose the message that you want to get across. And the, the beauty of the best thing that I love about an infographic is that it is exactly what it says it is. Um, it's information tied to a graphic. So you don't have to write like a big long essay to get your message across. There's very limited text along with nice bright visuals to just get it out there. Um, You'll also get to learn about what colors do you use? Like, what do you feel like when you hear a brand, for example, like Coke? Some people think happiness and they think of that uh, bright, flashy color of red. How do you feel when you hear the word Pepsi? Other people think about fun and cool. A long time ago, they used to have like a Pepsi commercial where they had glasses and um, a little, a little um, image of a, a Coke, a, pardon me, of a Pepsi can with sunglasses on it. So that's why some people would think about cool. I don't know if maybe you wanted to share of some um, instances or things that you can think about in terms of maybe commercials or posters or billboards that you've seen um, that come to mind. Feel free to share them in the chat. Also, you want to um, think about how you're going to compile your research. So how you're going to put to get, put it together and create drafts. And we're going to go over all of this. So we're, we're going to explain the process of creating sketches. And like, I'm not Picasso. You, you don't have to be, <laughs> you don't have to be a fabulous artist, right? Anybody like you'll see some of the sketches that I've made before. And that's the, that's the beauty of Canva is that even if you just have something that, you know, is just in your mind that you want to come to life. Once you utilize Canva, it has everything in there already set for you to go. And that's a part of the process. So layout and composition are one of the most important things when you're thinking about graphic design because they're important skills that every designer, and think of yourself, you're a designer. You wanna be able to make sure that um, you have an understanding in these things. Nobody's expecting or expected to be, you know, a, the person who knows everything. But the important thing is that you know the tools and where to find them. And that's what, that's what Can, Canva is great for. Um, it also deals with placing your items in a specific pattern or relationship to one another. And we'll talk about that. Things such as um, the rule of thirds. So that way your, pres your presentation, your infographic, it will have a very nice um, visual look, which is something that we call aesthetically pleasing. So we're going to talk about design spaces, working in the page, the banner on the screen, and how we can accomplish those things. So here we have an example of the rule of thirds. So you can see here that this is just divided. It has several lines across, so horizontally and vertically. And if you think about a photograph, the beauty of it is that you have it set out so that way you can know as a designer how things can look balanced. You can get that nice visually pleasing or aesthetically pleasing image across to the audience. It's all about placement. And Mary, if you could also keep a, um, an eye on the chat for me, I'd really appreciate that. Yeah, sorry, we're having little conversations over here in the chat. <laughs> <It's been going laughs> no, so, no I problem. just wanna make sure I don't miss any important questions. Yeah, so I'm gonna no, keep I'll, going. I'll let you know if there's any questions, but we're Thank just you. who's had some experience. So I'll share that when you're done there. Awesome. And so here's another example, like rule of thirds, it doesn't always have to be um, in equal quadrants, is what we'd call or equal portions, but it's just laying it out so that it is, it has some sort of a, a, a visually aesthetically pleasing, which means that to the, the person's eye, it, it looks like it follows some sort of a linear um, framework, which would mean 
that the lines that we showed you previously here, the vertical and the horizontal lines, it's just used as a guide so that way things can flow. So there are lots of principles of design, but the fundamental, or I should say the most important ones that you wanna talk about so that you have an understanding of design space, you wanna consider something called the six design principles when you're designing. So those are balance, alignment, proximity, contrast, repetition, and space. So balance is exactly how it sounds. It's just making sure that the things in your design space, so whether it's an infographic, a poster, a card, that it has some, some form of symmetry. Um, also alignment, which helps to create, it also helps to create uh, balance as well. I'm gonna show you images so that you can see visually exactly what we're speaking about when we're talking about these particular principles. And then proximity. Proximity has to do with how close images are to one another in the actual object that's being designed, which we would call an artifact. Contrast, it also helps you to learn about um, shading and things that work together to look pleasing to the eye. When you have contrast, everything doesn't always, everything shouldn't blend into one. It's going to pop where it's supposed to pop and be um, softer where it's supposed to be softer in terms of color. And then also repetition. Graphic designers think a lot about, you know, what um, particular visual elements they may want to repeat in their design um, to create something called rhythm. And then space. So the overall space that you're designing, you want to think about space between the objects inside of your artifact and just the overall design space. And here is an example of an infographic. So what I love about infographics are the fact that they are very, very, very um, capturing to the eye. Like I remember one time I went over to um, my eye doctor and they had something up about just the importance of taking care of your eyes and eyesight. And usually infographics, there are many different types, but basically they have three colors as the main background colors. That way it doesn't get too busy. And then you think about something that you're passionate about or that you'd like to get across to your audience. You know, some people it may be indigenous rights, some people it may be nutrition, but the great thing is you don't have to create a whole long essay or, you know, have a lot of text. You just come up with a few images that look really, really pleasing to you. Um, and you deal with contrast, which is the different colors, alignment, repetition, proximity. So this is a way basically to get all of the things that I mentioned before about some of the de design principles across. Don't remember there are six, but just in a nice, easier way. And that's what an infographic is. It's a lot easier when you look at it to receive, I think. So here are the design principles again, layout, alignment, hierarchy has to also deal with like the leveling from the bottom upwards, proximity, so how close things are, balance, repetition, color, contrast, negative space. So the space that is that is inside here versus what's on the outside, that would be the negative space there. So we also wanna think about color and hue and different things like saturation, how, how in depth we want to go, um, the tone for brightness, all of these things help to make an image really pop for the audience. And so I'm just going to briefly talk about so that way we can get designing a rough sketch, what materials, as Mary mentioned, for your infographic, we're just going to elaborate further. Some important things to know are inter intellectual property. So when you are designing an infographic, there's something called Creative Commons, which is a website, we're going to talk about this a bit more, 
where it's a database, actually. There are pictures in there, so photographs of things that you can actually use and remix or put into your artifact, put into your object. And people have given permission to share these things so that they can be a part of other people's designs. Canva also has Canva the free one, as well as the, um, the one where you have to pay. So they also have Canva for nonprofit. Um, but I mean, just for standard basic things, as we get into it, you'll see what um, the, the, the free one affords you or what it allows you to do. So right now, what I'm just going to show you briefly, and as I mentioned before, was about the sketches. So if everyone could get their pens and papers ready. Um, in the meantime, I don't know if there was, you mentioned, Mary, there was something that you might want you, the girl in the chat. Was there something in the chat that no? Oh, sorry. Thanks. I was just going to let you know that some people have had some experience with uh, Canva and some people haven't yet. And we've also had people mentioning Procreate, which is cool. Um, yes. Yeah. So this is great. I think everyone's going to really enjoy this. And as we move on, those who have had experience with Canva, I welcome you to or encourage you to share anything that you've learned or know about as we go along. That would be great. Either unmute and share it or in the chat. And um, yeah, this is this is wonderful. Kind of awesome. Nice awesome. I love that. It's it's a great mix, it sounds like. So um, here is just a brief, it's a quick look at when designing for a client or even for yourself of some things that you can think about. You just do a rough draft, right? And so, as I said, I'm no Picasso. I'm not a famous artist or, or I, I drawing is not my, one of my strengths, but I wanted to create an artifact for asthma. My son has asthma and I figured, you know what, it would be nice to get more awareness out about it. So this was the final product. And I made sure to put in my notes that the figure, it's not actually drawn to scale or created to scale. It's not gonna be the actual size because the beauty of it is that you can create it for the size that you need it to be. We'll talk about dimensions and pixels later on, but see asthma and kids. And I just created a fictional, um, organization here, ABC Asthma Inc. is an organization that promotes childhood asthma awareness in the classroom and it explains some of the risks. So that way, if someone looks at it quickly, they understand dust mites are problematic for asthma. Exercise, you know, it can also be a trigger, illness, animal or pet dander, and some common symptoms in asthma include. So just now as we're going to take out our pens and paper, just think about, you see here, I just put text picture one, two, three, four, text, 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 and just some of the colors that I wanted to use. I put too heavy on one side, too light on the other side. I redid it here, put dust mites, and I figured, okay, you know what, let's mix it up, put pictures at, on, scatter it on each side so that way it could have balance and symmetry, and then just put brief text. So that way it's not too much text on one side, or too many pictures on one side. So we're gonna give you a few minutes here to just draw um, something that you think, you know, it, it can be any related to any topic that you're interested in. Um, just take some time to just brainstorm a rough sketch. And as I'm you're sketching, oh, sorry, go ahead, Sharice. Oh, no, I'm just gonna stop sharing my screen as well. Okay. Um, as you begin your sketch, first of all, think about, okay, what is your topic? And, you know, Sydney's identified that Sydney might want to share about a, um, a hobby or something versus a problem. That's a great idea. It's the same process for either a problem or just sharing about anything when you come to an infographic. You don't want any more than five key points. And as you looked at, if you'll re recall, Sharice's, I think, what, were there four? I counted, but now I've forgotten already. I think there were four sort of key points. Yep. Um, so you just want to think of three to five key points that you would like to share. Yes. And then you want to organize around those three, those three to five points in an infographic. And generally speaking, infographics are sort of that long, sort of somewhat narrow and rectangular um, long wise. They don't have to be. You could do it any other way, but that's that's the, the template we're going to use today. Um, so if you could kind of arrange your sketch around that, just make sort of a rectangle and um, like a, a long, narrow rectangle and think about your sketch and we'll give you, how long do you think we need for 
You can let us know in the chat when you're done, but we'll give you, what do you think, Sharice, how many? Um, maybe just 10, 15 minutes, does that work? Sure, and if you're done sooner, let us know. So that's 12.04 now. So if you need, um, let's say we'll start with, we'll start with about 10 minutes and we'll kind of do a check-in at seven minutes and then see how people, how people are doing. So that takes us, well, we'll say eight because it'll take us to 12 <laughs> or it's not 12, 12, it's 12, 12 at my time. So 12 minutes after whatever, <laughs> whatever time is where you are. Um, and please use the chat and unmute if you wanna talk about, talk about things and uh, just take this time to really think about your, your topic, three to five key points, and then you wanna organize your infographic around that. Once you've done the organization, you can start thinking about the color scheme as Sharice mentioned, you know, what kind of maybe three colors I think you were saying Sharice is kind of a good, Yes, Nick. three colors yeah. is usually best. That way yeah. you don't have to worry about it being too busy. Yeah, and maybe what I'll do so that you can refer to it is I'll put the the um, the graphic design mm -hmm. infographic back up so that people can be looking at it. You read and, my mind. Okay, <laughs> Thank great. You. Um, and it, so I'll share my screen to do that. And then uh, actually I'll get it up first. That would be useful. And we actually found this, this was very serendipitous. We actually found it in Canva as one of the example infographics. And we're like, hey, that's cool. <laughs> so I'll share my screen now and, and put that up. And again, use the chat to ask any questions or to share some ideas. Sydney, I'd love to know about the topic that you're going to create about um, and the points that you're thinking of. Um, I'd love to know everybody else what what topic you're going to choose. So hopefully you can see here and I'll make it a little bit bigger. Whoops, not too big because then we can't see the weight sections. There we go. So you can notice that they've got like four key points, contrast, alignment, repetition, and proximity um, is the one that they've, so they didn't, they didn't include what's missing here. Space is missing and contrast is missing oh no sorry contrast nope. is there. balance isn't there thank you thanks mm -hmm. there there are more i mean we can give or take but i mean there are the main ones i guess that they've listed and i guess they probably limit it to limited it because usually infographics i guess the less less is more less text is usually better so as mary said you know three to five um things and then the, the main things that are related to your topic that are important for people to know about your topic for awareness. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, if you're struggling to think of an idea or, or just, um, just really not sure what you want to do, that's okay. You can always think of um, a generic design and Sydney, instead of Sydney saying, instead of four points, can you do a small description with bullet points? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That works too. That works too. Yeah. There's so yeah. many great topics and I mean, so many great notes in the chat. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's been great. Nice and interactive, which is fun. This is what I love about teaching. I love meeting people and working with them and, you know, it's so much, we asked to do this live interactive thing rather than just a recording. Cause I know the recording is really useful to refer back to or for people who can't come, but it's really nice to have this back and forth. Yeah. I agree. And all this information also helps us learn about you guys as well. You know what I mean? And what you guys are learning in schools and or just doing in terms of your own interests. Like it's nice to have all this information here. Technology, mm -hmm. technology related careers. Mm -hmm. ah, I like that. Nice. Thanks, Trina. Yeah. Yeah, it's basically about sharing information with graphics, infographic, yeah. So whatever you wanna do and then be thinking about these principles as you create your little sketch. Um, and then we'll dive into creating one together. And just to let you, let's, just to let you know, to reiterate again, in today's working time, you might create the one that you really wanna share and submit to the contest, but you might be sort of, I'm just playing and learning today and I'm going to go and do that on my own time. It's entirely possible. Any, anything is possible. And Katie has asked, could you make one explaining what something is? Absolutely. Yes, that's cool. And are we allowed to look at what other people have made for help? Sure. Yeah, I'd love if anybody wants to share their screen. Um, we'd love to. I can stop presenting if anybody wants to share their sketches. In fact, I will in a moment. I'll give us 
I'll do the check-in at 12 minutes after. So we got three minutes left and then we'll see if anybody wants to share their screen just to, or I guess actually, well, you could share your screen. You could just turn your camera on instead of sharing your screen because it's a, probably a sketch that you've made on paper. You could just hold it up if you want to or describe it. But as we start making the actual infographics in Canva, then we can share our screens and you can actually see what everyone's doing. Yeah. And I think you can see as you look even at this example infographic, what they've done is, is use the sections to help highlight the different points that they want to share. So that really helps visually when you look at this, our brains can really quickly understand, well, this is something about this and this part is something about this because our brains visual information like pictures and colors actually uh, are, will be attended to by our brains before actual text. So it's like a guide almost for your eyes. It's like a guide for your brain and eyes. Just give you two more minutes and I'll stop chatting so you can focus on what you're doing and we'll check in with everyone. And remember, it can be any topic that you feel passionate about. That's the great thing about graphic design. We all have something that's so important to say, you know? We all have powerful voices, powerful messages. And it's nice when you can look back and see the things that you've created. You never know when you may want to actually get them out there for, you know, it's, it's nice to save them and, and look back. And the nice thing is that with a free account, even a free account, Canva does that for you. So you can just go back into Canva and see all of your designs, your practice, your prototypes, your real things. It's nice. You can reuse, you can adapt something that you've done before for some other purpose. So true. What I love about it is that you don't have to worry about storage either, because unless you're going to actually download it, Canva will save all of your designs right there in Canva for you. So you don't have yeah. to worry about using up, up all the space in your computer every time you want to design and save something. It's yeah. just within Canva, except for yeah. when you go to download it and save it. Yeah. And I love that it's both mobile and desktop and they're pretty much the same. Although I will, I will show, I actually want to find out who's using what, so I know uh, what to make sure I'm showing on and, um, and who's using mobile, who's using desktop. Um, so let's do a quick check-in. So you can either unmute and tell us, or you can put in the chat who would like some more time for the sketch part or who, and who's ready to move on. So if you need some more time, just let us know what you need some more time. And if you're ready to move on, you can just say, ready. Sure, Katie, excellent. Yep, no problem. We'll give you some more time. And Sydney, you're saying sketch-wise, you think you're fine. Excellent. Okay. So we'll give Katie a bit more time. And Sydney, what you could do is start looking at Canva if you want to. If you, while you're waiting, you could kind of take a look at all the tools. We're going to go over all the tools in a moment. And I forgot, I meant to at the very, very beginning talk about Zoom tools. So we'll do those two in a moment. I was going to look at the templates. Nice. Sorry, go ahead. Shree. Sorry, my apologies. There was a bit of a lag there on my end. Sorry about that. I was going to ask too, are we, are we sure that everybody knows how to log into Canva? Is that? That's a good question too. Yeah, because some people hadn't used Canva before. So once we're finished with the sketches, we'll be moving into actual Canva. So please make sure you let us know if you don't have yourself set up yet in Canva. And Sydney, I find I love browsing the templates and things. It can be, <laughs> you can really go down some good rabbit holes um, and really dive in. It's a lot of fun. Even when Sharice and I were preparing and looking at all the, the infographics, if you just say see all and kind of scroll through, it was like, wow, look at that. There's an infographic on this and that. And <laughs> but for the next activity, we're actually going to, first of all, practice using the same template, which Sharice is going to lead us through. And then after that, we're going to be looking at either your own template or starting from scratch. 
Yeah, exactly, Sydney. Yeah, it's hard to find ones that look like your sketch, and that's why um, we'll start by practicing to learn some of the tools with Shree. She's going to lead through using a template, the same template for everyone, just to practice that. And then we'll flip, and I'll do one, um, how to build one from scratch. And that might be, um, or your own template, like your own choice of template, but that might be where you can find, you can create one that looks like your sketch. Yeah. And when you're looking at the templates too, you can see, is this one sort of like my sketch that I could, you know, revise it or adapt it? Cause that can be, that can be helpful too. Sometimes starting completely from scratch is, is a little bit more difficult, but we will be doing that together. So if that's what you wanna try, excellent. Okay, so we'll give everyone about two more minutes and then we'll move on from the sketch. And Katie, if you're not sh finished with your sketch, that's okay too, because you might be able to refine it or your ideas might kind of crystallize as we go through the practice um, prototype with the same template. Oh, excellent. Okay. So how's everybody else? Are you ready to move on? Uh, we've got Agatha and I'm Olivia. I'm gonna share my sketch oh, sorry, here. Yeah, Trina, yeah, nice. I'm only just kind of starting oh, and cool. I guess I've picked a difficult one for me because I'm not a digital economy or, or tech STEM professional. I don't know what all the careers are. So I'm sort of like researching as I go. So it might nice. take me a little longer, but I love <laughs> it. there I am. Awesome. I love choosing opportunities where I get to learn something. Yeah, that's yep. what I did for my example too. I'm really interested in blue green algae because I now live in a, on a lake and um, like in a village on a lake. And uh, and Agatha, you're good, excellent. Okay, and how about Olivia? Are you ready to go on? And so I, I thought I don't actually know much about this, but I something I really want to know more about because now it's, I mean, it was important to me before, but now it's really important to me. And so I took the opportunity to research it to create my sample. Cool. Okay, I, I think so. I'm gonna stop sharing. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Trina. I always use opportunities like this to to double down on things. So while, so this is obviously part of my work. I mean, everyone knows I'm the coordinator of this program, of course. Um, but it's a trick I learned in university. I'm not sure how much your teachers in junior high and high school might appreciate it, but university professors very much told you to to double up on projects in terms of use your research from one class to benefit your research in the other class so just a little little trick sure that's a great tip yeah mm -hmm. take every opportunity to learn and then to reuse and share yeah so true Okay. I mean, like my sketch, <laughs> some people may not even have been able to read my writing because it was just a brief little sketch that I made to myself. I said, you know, I'm going to put this here for asthma. And that's the great thing because you know in your mind what you want to design. And as you, you're you going through and thinking about what what's important to you, you have lots of opportunities later when, you know, you may want to change the sketch. You may want to change the actual in, um, in infographic, tongue twister there. <laughs> within Canva like that's the great thing I love about graphic design you don't have to stick to one thing it's a process where you can continually work through it because sometimes creativity happens in spurts and you may get a idea right now and then maybe tomorrow you know you think oh I want to change that up and tweak that up a little bit or remix it up a little bit so that's the great thing about it Perfect. Teresa, I forgot. I'm sorry. I was supposed to show the tools first before you did the prototype. So I'll, yes, no I'll worries. Now is everybody wrapping up with their sketch if you needed more sketching time, but um, that's that's not a problem. But take a look up here for a moment. At, I'm going to share my screen and we're just going to look at some of the basic tools and then Teresa is going to take it away with uh, revising a template and then we'll go back with me and we'll do one from scratch. Um, so just as, and if you haven't gone into Scratch, please let us know in the chat or unmute and let us know if you need any help. And it can be mobile or desktop. The mobile, luckily, um, or laptop, the mobile looks pretty similar. It's not that different. And there are just some tricks that you need to do a little bit differently, whether you're on mobile or computer, but they're pretty, uh, pretty user friendly. So you usually to open to the home, which is this, yep, and home into Canva. 
Um, I have a free account and I have never, I use it also for my own professional work with as an artist and I've never had to go beyond the free account. It's really, um, really nice what they offer you. Um, so on the left here, you can see we've got our navigation. You can go to all your designs and it'll bring up everything you've ever designed. You can also filter just by recent. Um, you can also look at it shared with you. And so um, Sharice worked on one in her own account and, sh and Sharice shared a, um, an infographic with me so I can see it right here, which is pretty cool. Um, brand kit, I think there's some um, things with brand kit that are pro, but they're also, they also let you, okay, thanks Sydney so much for coming and we look forward to what you create. Please make sure you share it with us um, sure. or I'll find out from Trina, I guess when you submit it. But thanks so much. Thank you, Sydney. And um, check in with the recording. Yeah, check in with the recording and then you'll be able to follow through. Great. Um, so there are the pro version offers more brand type things, but um, the free version actually still gives you some support for creating a brand. So if you're doing your own business or if you want to kind of start on a campaign about something, you can use this aspect of it to, uh, to decide on what all those features are that will be shared across all your designs. Um, content planner, this is new. So this is kind of cool. You can actually plan in advance. You can even put it out on a calendar, which is pretty cool. You can organize things in folders. Um, and then the, the part that I love about Canva, I, li I like creating from scratch, but I also love using the templates, either literally using them and revising them or even just referring to them for ideas. And they have so many templates. So we're actually going to just go to the template section and you can see that they you can browse by subject and you can also go across the top um, and find, you know, they've got presentations, posters, Instagram posts, logos, blah, 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 blah. They have everything you could possibly need. Um, in fact, it's, as I said, it's, you can spend a lot of time falling down rabbit holes and, <laughs> and exploring these. They also have a lot of great features that you can print and stuff and those are cost, but they also have this learn session section, which is amazing. Just great graphic design basics and how do you actually use Canva and branding. And there's a whole design school with that. And there's a lot of really free, really great free learning materials. Um, and if we go, I'll just quickly pop into uh, um, the design that I was working on, which is this one here. And I'll share it with you later because I did this from scratch, but just taking a quick peek at the tools and then I'll pass it over to Sharice to go in more detail and to use the tools. Now that I'm in a design, um, which again, we'll walk you through the steps to get here, but uh, in a moment, but just to quickly look at the interface on the left, we have all the templates. We can revisit any of these templates. They have them filtered here. I've already chosen infographic, but they have um, choices for me specifically, education infographics, timeline infographics. Uh, so that's again, that might not be a problem. It might be more information. Maybe that would be useful, Trina. Maybe that layout might be more useful for yours charity one and then all results they have a section of elements and they have a ton of choices here sorry my internet's taking a moment to catch up there it goes we have recently used lines and shapes cool graphics photos videos and even audio now if you're sharing digitally um so be thinking about this now whether you're thinking of a print infographic something that would be printed and handed out or whether it'd be a digital sharing through a website or social media um because obviously videos and audio won't work in print. You'll notice that some of these are free. When you hover over, you should be able to see whether it says free. And if it has a crown and says pro, that means it's something that you have to pay for. So avoid those. Although I guess if you really, really had to, it's, it's, they're not that much money, but I think you can find what you need free often. They have charts, frames, grids, so many different things in under elements. You can also upload your own images, your own videos and your own audio which is great text. Um, it's really nice. They've got some just heading, subheading and body text. And then once you choose text, you'll, you'll have an interface up here, tools that we'll walk through when we're doing our prototype that you can, um, that you can use. And sorry, and the interface will show, change up here, depending on what element you're in. You can upload logos and more. There's a whole lot of things. So I'm gonna pass it over to Sharice because I don't wanna run out of creating time and she's going to lead us through creating one from a template. Thanks, Mary. 
This is so, this is amazing. I'm so excited to, to see what everyone's going to create. And I'm so happy everyone is so like enthusiastic about this. This is awesome. So I'm just going to share my screen. Just one moment. Okie dokie. Sorry about this, guys. Just one sec here. Okay, and there was a quick little thing I just wanted to talk about um, before I forget. I mentioned Creative Commons before. So if you're in Google, just a quick little thing that's very, very helpful for a lot of people who, um, you know, like I'm not somebody who has like a ton of pictures that I've you know, I have in a portfolio, but sometimes I may be creating an actual um, artifact. And there are, as I mentioned before, tons and tons and tons of images that people are willing to share. So I would just search Creative Commons in Google. This is Creative Commons here. And it's just a brief little um, blurb about what they do. So basically they provide images that are already licensed for other people to use. It's a creative nonprofit organization and it's great. So you can always feel free to save that um, in your browser and you can remix them. And if you create an object that you know you wanna share out there and you can even share your own photos or things that you'd like for other people to be able to use. So if I wanted to say maybe create, um, and Canva does have pictures that you can use, but I may want to look and see what other things are available. If I'm creating something maybe about children. I can just search children. So I would go to the search as I clicked up top, search, searched up top search images, and then I just type in children and search. And it will show you many different images, so many different wonderful images that you can use. You can just right click, um, save the image within, you know, your own computer and then um, your own files. And then at a later date, you can upload them and put them into your particular infographic if that's something that you desire to do. And these are licensed, so you don't have to really worry about plagiarism. They've given permission, um, but you would still cite, um, you know, if that's something that you want to get out in some sort of an aspect, but we can always answer questions in regards to that later. And then also just briefly for some people, I know sometimes maybe we can be a little bit shy. Uh, hopefully everybody's already in Canva, but if you're not sure how to get in from scratch, um, you can just go on Google, quick, quickly type in Canva right there, online design made easy there's a logo right there you know you've reached the right place you would just click on it oh my computer there it's not but normally what it would do ah here we go let's try this one here canva there we go and normally what it would do because i'm already logged in there would be a little thing up here that would say log in and you can log in with your email and then it would send you a confirmation to your email just to make sure that um, it's you and that's how you'd log in. Uh, you can log in with Google, but it's just, it's just very, very user-friendly. So that's just a quick way to tell you how to share with you how to log in. So I'm gonna X out of that. So as Mary mentioned before, I'm gonna just do a little quick, 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 um, template of an infographic just so we can play around with some of the features and tools in here before we create something from scratch. So I'm just going to click template. And can you guys hear me okay? Yep, we're all good. Awesome. You can click templates there. And it'll bring you to discover templates. It says here, search thousands of templates. Choose from thousands of free, ready to use templates for your next project. So I'm gonna put in, let's put in infographic. Infographic. Just put it in right there. And as Mary mentioned, there are gazillions of, <laughs> maybe not gazillions, but there are a lot of different types of infographics that 
you know, we can create. So just put an infographic, let's press enter. So infographic templates, design compelling infographics your fans will love to share with our selection of premium infographic templates. Take your visual marketing to the next level with sophisticated infographic designs. So here, if we just scroll down, just gonna show you different types of infographics. And I mean, some don't have to all have three colors, you know, there are different types. This is like a timeline based infographic. This one is all about sugar. Who doesn't love sugar? <laughs> I have a sweet tooth, unfortunately. Um, infographics for kids, charitable effort is very mentioned. There's ones for charity. So you can also browse through this and you can tweak it to what works for you. But for today, I like this one here. It says Newton's laws of motion. So if we can find that one there, we'll just click on it. And it will come up. And it says, customize this template. So we want to click on customize this template. This down further. Sorry, out of the way there. Okay. And it's rather small. So what we're going to do here is if you look on the right hand side, um, you can increase the scalability. So increase the sizing of it. So let's just play around with that feature for a bit. And I think, you know, it's better when you can have it not too, too large, but something that you can work with and you can see clearly is always great. I like about 74, 75 when I'm designing and then I can always scale it to a smaller number when I want to look at the overall image or artifact. So we're just going to play around with a few features here. That way you guys can have, uh, we can all have an idea of how the tools work within Canva. Okay. Just give me one moment. So I'm going to right here, I'm just gonna click on this lady right here. We can click on animate and there are different tools here. Breathe, let's see what breathe does. There was also a um, thing here that says remove watermarks and I believe that's a pay feature. So if I click on it, it says here, don't, don't pay for images, get Canva Pro. So that's something that if you want the image, if the image removed, then you can purchase. There's different things that you'd have to do pay per use. Um, but the nice thing about it is you can put your own image. There are, you can upload a picture. So if you have images that you'd like to, videos or even audio, you would just go to upload. But here, there are also some elements. You can see here, there are also photos. So if you go to elements, these are free. So say you wanted to just scroll over, you just use the arrow there. Ah, there's a pretty neat picture. I just clicked on it. And there's some text there. You just click on it and delete. Click on it, delete. Click on it and then delete. And you can also scale the image and it gives you the width and height right there. You see, you can change it around to what works for you. And the great thing is if you have images that you've taken yourself, you know, and you've uploaded in your computer, you can always right click on this, delete it, you can delete all of them. You can always move this over here, just playing around with some of the tools. And if there's say something that's happened and you say, oh no, this is not what I wanted. You always just 
can use the arrow there. You don't want to use the arrow up here because that will actually take you way back um, out of Canva as opposed to just backing up for, you know, undoing or doing your image. And if you need to go back again, just play along with some of the tools there and see how things work. But we're going to, I'm going to click on this here. Hopefully you're able to put in a picture and we're going to delete this. Remember, Mary's going to walk you through actually creating one after from scratch. So you'll have more time. This is just a brief um, run through of how the tools work. Okay. So as mentioned before, you do have lots of different tools here that make it easy. So that way, when you're using the template, you don't have to worry about certain things. If I want to change the color, I can just click there left clicking. And then here I'll see something that says background color. Just going to click on it and many different colors will come up and you can choose what colors work for you. You can change it, you know, but the, the great thing about infographics is you don't have to worry about things like there's things called gradients. Um, you don't have to worry about all of that. You just, have a tool here that is very, very user friendly. And it gives you the actual nuller, number, <laughs> number, I almost said color and number together. It gives you the color number or the number of the colors there because oftentimes when you're, when you're um, doing design, you may be working with somebody and they sometimes they may say, you know, I like a shade that is similar to um, turquoise, but it's maybe closer to, uh, and they may give you a particular number. And sometimes depending on um, what tool you're using, you can actually type in that number and then that number will pop up. So Canva here, you'll, you'll know that A4631F is this number here. Is that color there, brown? So you're able, able to change it there. If you wanna animate there, pardon me, just one moment here. Also, there's something that I really, really, I don't wanna to forget to show you guys this, which I really, really like is I, I love music. I'm a singer by nature. You can also embed music. So I just go to audio and there's the ukulele song. And it'll actually play when you show your image. And there are, I mean, that's a feature that I think is completely cool, completely awesome. Now, if I wanna change my text, I would just click on the text here and we just start typing away. It's just so that you get an idea, but I'm gonna go back here, back arrow, back arrow, back arrow back arrow. And so what we'd want to do, we can even say, you know what? I think I want to change maybe the font. So I'll just go to this area right here. And I'll type in maybe mm, calligraphy. And it'll give me different types of font. So you see, you can change your font there to what works for you. Just one moment. I think the computer seems to be lagging today. I apologize, guys. Uh, it's just a limited time offer. But we don't need that because we actually like the free version. <laughs> yeah, hey, you gotta watch for those crowns because they're, they're, they're <laughs> sprinkled everywhere, but we don't need them. Right. So just, right. It's, so we're just going to play around. So you can change the colors, just right click on it. You may, if there's something too that you maybe you like here, you can right click on it. You can even copy and paste somewhere else and then just drag it down. There are effects in terms of shading or colors. So many different things and features placement here in terms of where the word is going to be positioned within the block. So you can center it left, click back on it. And, and somebody had asked about bullets before. So if I say, click on the text here and I want to have a list, 
Canva just gets the list going for me. So you see, there's a lot of different things you can do. You can increase the size, you can decrease the size. And there's one other thing too, I wanted to mention um, in terms of when you're, I mentioned before about saving your actual graphics, how Canva will save the design for you. And if you decide that maybe you have um, somebody that you wanna work on a particular image with, you can download it here once you're all finished. Pardon me, I have a little bit of a hiccup there. And then it will ask you the file type. It will give you a suggestion actually for what type of file. You can click on it. Oh, my apologies. This is where I wanted to take you, sorry. You wanna share your, that, that's, we'll get back to that in a moment. You wanna share your file, right? Or create a link. So here, when you go to share, just right here at the top, you have the option to choose whether when you're sharing it, if you want the person that you're sharing, I remember Mary had showed you before where she had some, some designs that I had shared with her. You can choose whether you want the person who you're sharing it with to be able to edit it, use as a template, or to just be able to watch. So I'd like Mary say to be able to edit this one, we can work on it together. I copy the link and that way I have the link later on. I can go ahead and copy and paste it to her and I don't have to worry about, um, like emailing back and forth, like how people would have to do way back in the day. It's just there and, you know, um, something that we can edit and work on together. I'm just trying to be mindful of time. And I know we do have a lot of uh, creations to do from scratch, but this is just a brief little tutorial here. You would just click on things and you can just choose, you know, as you type away, type away the text, but I don't want to take up too much time because we're going to create one from scratch. Um, I'm not sure I'm saying your name. Thank you so much, Sharice. I'm going to try to say it. And if I say it incorrectly, I'm sorry. Is it Tanea? Hopefully you're having difficulty hearing. Are you having trouble hearing everyone or just one person? Would it be helpful if we speak more slowly? Um, yeah, I want to solve problem solve that for you, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure which which to do if you if you could give more information in the chat about that. Um, maybe Cherise can help problem solve that with you. And um, I'll be sharing my screen to go over to create one from scratch. But and I don't want you to miss this, though. So please put in the chat <clears throat> if you can hear me. Hopefully you can hear me. Please put in the chat whether it's you know too fast. It's just um, maybe breaking up, if it's breaking up. I know Sharice had a couple moments there where it was breaking up um, and then it got better again. Oh, oh you're having trouble hearing guys. everyone. Try to fix it, but no luck. Okay, what are you accessing the, um, the meeting through? Are you on a laptop or a desktop, a phone, a mobile device? And again, if you can put that in the chat, that would be great. And I'm wondering, this could be the problem. Uh, have you noticed the video sort of getting kind of uh, delayed or frozen? Because that could be then your internet, it's just breaking up. In which case, what can be helpful is just closing everything that you can possibly close. So if you even had two devices. Okay, yeah, Trina, that's a good idea as well. Maybe mm -hmm. that would be helpful. Yeah. And, and in addition to that, maybe right by where the microphone is, the mute button, there's a little arrow there. You might wanna check and see um, your speakers. There's also, you can test your speaker and microphone just yeah. to make sure for sound, if everything is okay. You can do a speaker yeah. test. Yeah, we forgot to go over, I keep remembering and forgetting, we forgot to go over the Zoom tools. So as Sharice mentioned, there's your microphone icon and then there's a little up arrow. And if you tap that, you get some choices and one of them is testing your speakers. Um, but do you want to try just, do you wanna first of all, just try going through kind of hopping out and hopping back in through the Zoom link directly? Did you remember how to find the Zoom link? I think Trina said, Trina, do you want, rather than me trying to remember, do you wanna say those again? Yeah, for sure. Um, it is. 
when you're in feed loop under the sessions, I assume that's where you are. Um, directly under the video, it says experiencing issues. Click here for additional live stream options and you get a pop up then that gives you a Zoom link, including a password to log in to the Zoom. Katie's brought up another point. It might depend on where you are in your house or if you're moving around potentially with your device. Because I know in my, I live in rural Northern Ontario and it depends on where I am. If I'm sitting on the couch and I lean my head left on a phone call, it'll cut out. If I, <laughs> if I lean my head right, I'm okay. <laughs> I can relate, Mary, I can relate. <laughs> yeah. So today I'm going to let you, um, and I hope I'm saying your name properly. I apologize if I'm not. Um, please continue in the chat discussing mm -hmm. and problem solving with that because I do want to get you set up. And in the meantime, I'm going to start getting ready to share my screen for everyone to start um, start with one from scratch. So uh, before please you just start that, if yeah. I could just take this moment to say this is your. 10 point gamification code for this session, Artifact, which is your uh, product that you're creating, if I'm understanding correctly, mm -hmm. from my own perspective. So Artifact, A-R-T-I-F-A-C-T, -T, all in caps, put that in for your gamification code, 10 points, you still get your 50 points for actually submitting an artifact after, after the fact. So here awesome. you are. And yes, you got it, Trina. An infographic is a type of artifact. You got it. You got it. Very cool. That's so cool. The win points. Excellent. Awesome. All right. Um, so I'm going to get ready to get everyone set up. Tanea, please keep trying to work through this because um, we'd like you to be able to access. And at, at the very least, the recording will be there afterwards if you just want to hang out with us and try your best. And then later, hopefully, you can access the recording and it might be more clear or hopefully it would be more clear. But please try to solve this. So keep using the chat. Talk to us if you need to. And I'm just going to get everybody getting going with the other and, and um, no worries. I'll man the chat to, to help yeah. Tanea. I hope I pronounced it correctly as well. And it, it might be that you have too many things open. I open. think I've said that already, but if you could even use two different devices, if you happen to have a phone to join the, the meeting with and, or something else that you're, you can use the meeting for one and Canva with the other, or just join and listen and use Canva later. Um, after you've seen what we do, you can try a couple of things like that. Okay, so make sure you've got your sketch with you, everyone, because we're going to, I'm going to share my screen, get ready to share, and uh, we're going to create one from scratch because that can be useful. The, I love the fact that it provides so many different templates because, you know, it's done all the thinking for you. It's done the design, all the design principles are there, and all you have to do is take advantage of them. However, as I think it was maybe Sydney pointed out, it's really hard sometimes to find um, an infographic that exactly meets your needs. So then you might want to do a bit of both. You might want to open a template. Um, I'm going to go back to home for a moment. You might want to choose one of the other templates that looks a little bit more like the one you want to create. So we're going to go to get to the templates in case you haven't found this already up in this top section. I could just use the the scrolling button to get to other ones. If I go to infographic, it's going to open up all the different infographic uh, templates. So at this point in time, you can either choose a template that you're going to completely revise, choose whichever one best suits your ideas and your sketch, or you can just start with a blank canvas, which is what we have right here. And it's already in the dimensions of an infographic. Okay, so, and again, unmute if you need me to repeat anything, if you want to ask a question, if you need me to go slower, whatever. And you can also, in Zoom, you can also use the little reactions button to raise your hand and it raises a little virtual hand. <laughs> we'll see that, uh, or you can write in the chat, um, but let us know if you need, need help. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use this blank one. But first of all, I'm just going to go back to home for a second and show you the one that I created from scratch. I'm not a great designer and I'm not 
going to say that this is the best design. I can see there are things that I'd like to do about it, but uh, to change with it, but I can show you what I did just to kind of start the thinking and then we'll create one ourselves. Um, so as I mentioned, I'm really interested in blue green. Oops, sorry, that was a little bit too big. Let's go down a little bit. I'm really interested in blue green algae blooms and how that's preventing us from using our lakes for fun in the summer, which is really sad. I moved to this house that's in a village on a lake. I'm so excited. I can walk to the beach and the grocery store. That was like a dream for me. And I want to be able to swim in this lake and boat in it and things. So, um, and we have had blue green algae bloom. So I thought, okay, let's find out about um, what causes that. So the process that you want to follow is first of all, identify your topic. Then you're going to do some research. I didn't actually know anything about blue green algae. So I'm going to pop over here and find out. I just Googled it and found the Ontario site. And um, I thought, okay, let's find out about blue green algae. What causes it and how can we prevent it? So I got some information here and it talks about, you know, what to do if you spot it. So I could have done an infographic about that. But what I'm really interested in is preventing it. So here we go. It is a whole section on prevention. And they've got one, two, three, four, five different suggestions for how to prevent it. I decided to just focus on three because five is a little bit tricky to build into a, an infographic and really show them. You can, but... So it's three to five max, but three to four is kind of more ideal, just in terms of your space and making things legible. So I'm going to go back to my design, which is one of these, one of these tabs. I think it might be this one. Nope. Pop, pop, pop. It's one of them that I have open, or I'll open it again. There it is. Voila. Okay. So I chose three of the points. And I chose, instead of having pictures for each point, I decided to do just text for each point, and I chose a background. So at this point in time, you're going to think about that. Do you want um, just colors to divide your, your, your um, infographic up the way a lot of the templates do? And you might add a little graphic or an image for each one, or do you wanna put everything on a, on a background? They even have um, video backgrounds, which really appealed to me at first, but then I realized how difficult that might be to, to show the information, but it could be really powerful because video is, is obviously really powerful. So decide for yourself if you want a background, in which case you can find those under elements. And you scroll down and in this point, this case I found, I looked at a video, which is this bottom one. And I was just playing, this is just a play thing to prototype, or if you want just an, a photo. And I went to see all, and there's the one I've used. And I'll show you how to drag that in in just a second. Okay, so what I'll do is I'm gonna to go to a new page just to be able to demonstrate easily from, uh, from scratch. And then we can revisit what I've done before just to help me and to help you. So what I did, if you wanna use an image or sorry, uh, an image as a background, you just drag it in and then you're going to resize it. And you can resize, you can keep the same dimensions by using the corners or you can um, change the dimensions a little bit by uh, using the dragging the sides or the bottoms. Now you wanna make sure if you are going to do a background, make sure that you cover your entire um, infographic, make sure that you don't have any you know, edges. So you can actually go beyond the edges if you want to. And because I have gone beyond the edges, that means I can drag it around and find the spot that I really want to show. So that little wavy thing there, I could put it further over and then just drag this and get more of the image, or I could put it dead center or I could move it up a little bit and have it sort of higher up. Okay. Now, if you're not going to have an image, I'm just going to get rid of that. You might want to divide it up into sections. And Katie has a good question. Are you able to copy and paste images for a background? Absolutely. Yeah, it's okay. Don't worry about the typing. I noticed I made a, I had an autocorrect up there where it said Canon instead of Canva. Um, yeah, there's backgrounds up here. You can also um, get backgrounds as well. If you don't want to use an image, they have some that are actually set up already. Whoops, that was a pro. I missed the crown. Where's the free one? This is free. Um, just pop that in. And again, you just resize it or you can upload your own. 
And so if I wanted to upload, I would just um, upload media and it would, I can upload that from my device, from Facebook, from Google Drive, from Instagram or Dropbox. So if I went to my device, it's going to come up with some images and I didn't get an image ready, but um, if I had one really quickly, I could maybe have one. I don't think I do have something up easily enough, uh, um, but you would just choose it. You can see that this is an image file. And so it's highlighted as if I could choose it, I could just put that in and I would just choose it and say open and it would upload. Well, while and we're waiting upload. for, oh, I wanted yeah. to just add if it was okay. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Thank you, Mary. I want to also say something that um, we just also want to, I wanted to mention is that just also think about like Mary's, her background is beautiful. Hers has to do with algae, right? So if you're doing something related to children, Canva has a lot of nice backgrounds with bright colors. You can use um, childlike text, like maybe block text. So try to think as you're designing about how your particular um, infographic is going to appeal to the group of people that you wanted it to appeal to. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good point. And you also don't want it to be too busy. Like I discovered with this video one, it's a great little video, I can play it here, but I have to imagine how am I going to share my information in a way that doesn't compete with that video? Are people going to be, oh, it's my, there we go. It's going to stall because my computer is not playing it's pretty intense on my computer to show this. And so I don't know if it's playing smoothly for you. Now it seems to be playing smoothly for me, but I have to think about how can I use this that people aren't going to be so distracted by the video, but that they'll also be able to see my information and attend to it. Because when we're designing media that we want to share information with, we have to be aware of what's called cognitive overload. And cognitive overload talks about how our brains can process information and we can only process so much information at one time. So if there's a moving visual, that's going to grab my attention and my brain more than text. And if there's sound, that's also going to be grabbing my attention. So you don't want too much um, taking your attention all at one time. You also want to think about who you're designing this for. If you're designing it for older adults like me, I confess I'm quite, <laughs> I'm getting up there in age. My brain works in some ways slower than people who are younger. I process more slowly. So I know that my daughter who's 21 loves to show me some informational videos and she loves them. She's like, isn't this great mom? And I'm lost. It's way too fast. But for her, when I show her things, like she watched Star Wars with me, which was cutting edge. I was alive when the first thing came out. Okay, I'm so sorry, Tanea. But if you want to, I don't know. Yeah, I guess you can't hear us either. But thank you so much for coming. And I hope you either are able to hang out or at least get the, the video. And we'd love to see what you create. And I hope I'm pronouncing your name properly. Um, when I watched Star Wars with my daughter, she said it was too slow and boring. So think about who you're creating for when you're thinking about how many elements are going to be happening at the same time. Let's say we don't want a background. Let's say we just want to divide it up into sections using colors and shapes. So I'm going to go back over to elements instead. And I'm going to go back to my blank page. And I'm going to use these lines and shapes. And I'm going to say, see all. And it's going to help me form those sections. Yeah, thank you. It's going to form those sections that I'm going to divide my infographic up in. So remember, I had three key points. You might have four or five. You might have three points plus a title or four points plus a title plus sort of a summary at the bottom. That's quite common as well. Um, so you're going to think about that. And you can go through these and you can see that some of them are already colored in. And you'll be able to change the color once you put them in. And some of them are not colored in. They're just blank. So for instance, if I took this one here and dragged it onto my, um, onto my canvas, it's not filled in. It just has um, color on the edges. I could size it so it filled the whole thing and it makes a section. Or I could size it so it's just part of a, an area and we can use being close to each other for things. And um, the color here, I can change the colors, but it's going to be, um, I think just the edges. I don't think it'll fill it for me. So 
so we can see if I unselect that. Now you can see I've got different colors there. I've got a gray and a yellow that I've chosen instead. Okay, so you can use, so go ahead and find some elements that you want to use. You could also just use lines, for instance. I'm going to delete this one that I've got here. I could use this wavy line. Oh, come on over. I could use this wavy line to design, to um, divide my sections. And I could, I can also rotate it. See this little, um, little button at the bottom that has arrows. I can use that to rotate it. And if you're working on mobile, this should be very, very similar. And I'll try to mention the things that are different to mobile, but please, if you have a question specific to mobile, if that's like what you're working on, I can both show it and I can also answer the question, but I can also show from my uh, mobile device. Can you put in the chat, if you have a moment, if everyone can put in the chat what they're working on, either laptop, computer, or mobile device, because that will help us too. Now I can change the color. I could actually make this, no, whoops, no color doesn't work. I can change the color of what I want to do. Oh, thanks, Katie, you're working on a Chromebook, so yours should be very, very similar. Mm -hmm. Sorry, go ahead, Sharice, yeah. No, no, I was just saying Chromebook. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I can use colors that might be, um, you know, I'm going to choose sort of three colors that I'm going to focus on, and maybe this is one of the colors that's going to be a divider. Okay. So I'm going back over to the elements with the lines. Let's say, now remember our one of the design principles is repetition. Our brains really like repetition. I think it's a way of like going, ah, I expected that and here it is. It actually gives us a pleasant feeling. So I might copy this and, um, and paste it so I have more than one so I can divide up my whole thing. And I can also make this a lot smaller if I want to use it as a divider for the whole section. So I'm going to make like a title area at the top and which is going to be this first little triangular section. I think I'll take less of a, make less of a tilt for this. I think actually I'll make it straight. And you notice, I hopefully you can see it, but if you try rotating, you'll see a degree show up and that helps you know when you're exactly even, which is nice. Um, so I've got a title area and then I'm going to have this divider and I'm going to copy this divider and I'm going to make all my, my main sections. So I'm going to right click and copy. And for mobile, it would be, depending on what mobile device, it would be whatever way you copy things on mobile. So for an iPad, it would be like long hold and press and you'll get copy. And then I'm going to paste it, um, copy and paste. And I can just move that wherever I want. Now, this is a little bit too big of a divider to make all of the divisions this way, but I have a title right now and I have two topic areas. So maybe what I do is move these up a little bit. I don't know if they're going to work very well. I probably could have shown chosen something a little bit thinner, or I could even make this bigger and use put text on top of it and use the divider as my section. That could be too. So if I made this really thick, I could actually put text on the lines and that would be my three, three points. If I was going to do that, I might want to tilt it a little bit. Okay, so our first, our first step was just topic. Second step is three to five points. And the next step is to decide whether you're going to have a background that you're putting on or if you're going to divide it up using colors and shapes. So I'll give you a couple of minutes just to finish that. And you've got lines and shapes here. You could also use graphics or the charts or frames. So for instance, I'm going to get rid of these. Let's say I wanted to divide mine up using, I know I'm going to use an image for each point. Then maybe I could get, I'm going to see all the frames. And I can choose frame mock-up, square frame, picture frame. I can, I can um, sort it up here. Uh, Polaroid frame, that sounds kind of fun. Okay, <laughs> this one here is free, but that would be for um, if I was going to be a doing a digital release. Doesn't really fit my topic of, of uh, whatchamacallit, of I'll, blue, green, algae, but it's kind of fun. I think I'll choose a different one. I'll go with, oh, that's a pro one. Don't want pro, I want free. Oh, these are all, that one's free, but hmm. There we go. This one's fun, but it's it's a pro. 
Pro, pro, pro. Okay. This one's the, great. The awesome thing great. too that, that I love about Canva, I don't know. See, it shows you there in terms of those lines, those purple lines that also helps with the rule of uh, thirds. Yes, thank you. Or even just lining things up. So let's say I want three yes. of these. I'm going to copy them. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste. How many did I, did I do too many here? So if I wanted them to be kind of um, in the exact same space, I can drag them and it's going to identify. You can see the purple line showing up. It's going to identify when it's in the middle. It's going to identify when it's... Um, Often you'll get a line showing you just kind of have to drag it around to find the lines. There we go. There's one. It'll show the outside edge and where that is comparison to this outside edge. Now you can see this one is lined up exactly in the middle. It's got, I've got the crosshairs there. So that's really nice. And so maybe I'm going to use an image for each of my three points. And and maybe I'm going to use the white space at the top for, um, uh, for the title and maybe a summary. And remember the rule of proximity means that things that are closer together are interrelated. So maybe my first two points are more related than my third point. I could put them closer together. Maybe my third point is most important. It's sort of a summary point. I could make that element bigger. The other nice thing you can do is you can actually flip the design. So if I have this one and I want it to flip the other direction, or how about this one, mate? I can flip it and I can choose to flip it horizontally or vertically. Vertically doesn't make much sense with this one, but I can do it. But I could, whoops, sorry, I've got to go back to the other way. Um, but I can also flip it horizontally. Um, so if I had, for instance, this little clippy thing, I can flip it. Again, this doesn't make much sense, this one, but Let's find one that makes more sense. If my butterfly, let's put my butterfly in there. And this one's actually animated already. I could put this and I could flip it horizontally. See, now it's pointing in the other direction. And what you want to do is you want to guide your eye. So if I put this this way, pointing towards the rest of the image, my eye is going to follow that moving butterfly and it's pointing in the direction of this image. If I flip it the other way, it's a bit of a, depending on where I place it, it works if I place it over here, but if I place it up here, it kind of is leading my eye away from that image and it doesn't really make much sense unless I wanted that to make, pay attention to the title and I put the title up, but I'm still not sure that works really very well. So you want to think about guiding the eyes and the attention. Um, I'm getting a pretty busy, busy thing happening here. I'm going to get rid of the butterfly too, because it's a little bit too busy for me. Um, if I wanted these to animate, as any element can animate, if you're doing a digital design, you choose animate, and there's a whole bunch of different ways to make them, whew, um, to make them animate. If you just hover over, it will do a little demo. Um, so here we have rise, here we have panning in, it's going to fade in, breathe, does kind of a, a breathe in and then, and these are, these are paid versions, but you can make it stomp or tectonic. These are kind of, whoo, neon, these are hurting my eyes actually. <laughs> and again, less is more. You want to think about what you're trying to, the message you want to convey. If you could put all sorts of fun elements in here and all you're going to get is, is somebody's going to look at it and go, oh, I can't even pay attention because it's too much. So you really want to choose. If you're going to animate, it should be all animated the same. Um, and you can also choose how long it animates. So let's say I do want to animate these elements. I'm going to make them all animate. And to do that, I'm going to group the items. To group them on, if you're on a Chromebook or laptop, you just select one and then hold your shift button down and select the others. And now I have a group that I can move around as a group and I can also animate as a group. Oops, so I could open the animate and I can have them all come in panning. That's kind of a nice one. Let's choose pan and then I think you can affect how much time the that's element animations. 
Okay, it's not showing up for me right now, but there was a button to show how much time it was going to take to uh, pan in, and you can you can um, you can choose you can manipulate that time to make it smoother, slower, or faster. Okay. Alrighty, I'm going to take actually, I'm going to go back and have no animation for right now. Um, if you're on a mobile device and want to group some elements, you're going to long hold and select one. And when it sees it selected, then you're going to tap others and you'll see this sort of dotted line up, up here around them and then you can move them. That gets really critical. If I go back up to the one that I created from scratch. These are actually separate elements, this frame, the background of being blue colored and the white text. They're actually all separate elements. And I really wanted to kind of manipulate them to show, uh, just to balance them out a little better once I'd created them. And so I, I created, I grouped them and then you can also lock them. So once I've selected an item, for instance, I'll see up here, this little lock. So if I want to select all of it, I'm going to hold my shift. I'm going to, I've got the one element selected. I'm going to hold shift and get the text as well. And the other, um, the circle shape. And now they're all, um, they're all selected together. I can move them as a big group. And then, and you can see as I move them that the, the text becomes more or less legible depending on what I put them on top of. If I put them right on top of that little wave. No one can read those. That's not going to work. And I have the two, the text on the other side being white because where I had this one placed, I needed black text uh, for it to be legible. Once I have it as like, okay, I really like it there. That's perfect. We can see it, it's balanced. Then I can actually lock that and have them all together. I'm just going to tap my three little dots and that opens up my menu, unless sometimes if you have a full screen, it's always visible, but if you can't see any tools, try those little three dots and I could lock them. And there they are now, I can't accidentally mess around with, with moving them. So let's go back down here to our blank one. Okay, so if you've divided up your canvas, and I'm going to make this a little bit smaller, you've decided, whoop, not that small, there we go. You've decided on your points, three to five points. You've decided how many sections you need, and you've either used an image or a frame or colors to divide up your, your, um, your infographic. Then you're going to start adding your, your actual elements, your information. So you're going to need a title. So let's do that next. And um, I'm just going to move these a little bit. And... Okay, so there's for my three points. I've decided they're going to be image based with just a little bit of text beside them. And I want a title. So I'm going to go to text, which on the left, I can see one of the choices is text. And you come up with a whole bunch of different choices of examples that I could just use. Like this one, for instance, it's a pro. No, we won't go with that one. Let's find a free one. Okay, this play is free. I could drag that in. I don't have to use that word. I can type whatever word I want into there by just double clicking and I could put water. And you can see it's not all fitting so I can drag it out. Oops, and I also have a typo. There we go. Um, you can drag so it fits, but you can also, I'm, in this case, I'm going to need to make the text a little bit smaller for it all to fit. So I can go up here where it says 171 for the font size, and I can tap on that and I can choose, or I can type right in, or I can use, whoops, or I can use the minus sign or the plus sign to make it a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger, and I can just keep tapping. So in this case, I'm just going to tap. I don't know what size is going to work. I just want to see. It looks okay. awesome so far. And remember, guys, as Mary said before, it's available. This is available online, the recording afterwards. So don't be yeah. Um, yeah. discouraged if, you know, the speed is a little bit faster for you. You get to play around with it. If it's a little bit slower for you, just everybody works at their own pace. So yeah. you can always pause it as, as needed when you watch it later. Yeah. Thanks, Sharice. And I can change the color of that by going up to text color. I could choose something a little bit more water-based um, or something that's going to pop a little bit more. I think in this case, I'm going to go to a water-based color. Um, and I can also change the font. 
they've provided this font and that's what I chose, but I can go ahead and change that. Right now it's at Bungie, so I just tap the down arrow and I can choose whatever font I want. That's kind of fun. And again, when you're choosing these, think about, you know, what is your subject matter? Do I want something sort of playful and fun? Do I want something more serious? Uh, you know, it's going to depend on what your topic is. Um, I'm actually going to go back to text and I'm going to choose a different text. I'm just going to put, so I'm going to get rid of this one. And I want the whole thing. Identify it, delete it, just hit delete. I'm going to add a heading. And this one now just adds the heading from scratch. So I can move it where I want it. I want it up at the top. You don't have to. You can tilt it if you want. I'm going to tilt it a little bit to kind of go with the tilt of my images. And it's not quite the right tilt, so I'm going to try. So see, I've got 11 degrees, and I'm just curious what the tilt is of this one. 13, so it probably was close to 11. So I've made it 11. I've got, got have this one. 11 as well and I just double tap in there to type in my heading and then again I can change my my uh, font color also be very um, cognizant of your audience if it's going to be an older audience you might want to just stick to black text you want to make sure it's legible so either put a background color underneath or um, choose a color that people can read and then you can choose your font because mine's kind of a serious topic, but I do want to get people's attention. I might try something like Alice. That one's kind of thin. I could make it bold, select it and make it bold. Um, and I can align it right now. It's center aligned. I could make it left aligned, no alignment, right aligned or center aligned. I'm going to stick with center and I can size it just by dragging the corners. Okay, so hopefully you now have your infographic divided up into the sections you need, visually in some way, by color, um, perhaps by element. You may or may not have a background color or a background um, image, depending on whether you're going to divide your sections up with background colors. Um, okay, and again, put any questions if needed in the in the chat. I want some summary information. So I'm actually going to go to elements again. And I'm going to go back up to all. And I want to get back to the there we go. I have to tap it twice. Okay, I want my lines and shapes. And I'm just going to add sort of a section down below at the very bottom with a shape. This is the one I used for my other one. I like this water one. I'm going to get this. And I'm going to drag this down to the bottom. And I might repeat it up there for the title as well. Remember that play is an important part of the creative process. You test things and you try it. And if you don't like it, luckily you can just delete and off it goes. <laughs> A lot easier digitally than it is with paper um, and markers, you know, to, to work on this. So I'm going to change the background color of that by clicking on the color box. And I'm going to make it match the background color of my title. Now, because I'm going to write text on top of this, I can actually even change the transparency of this. So when you have your element selected, up, it should open up your toolbar up here where you can see position, um, the copy style, paintbrush or roller brush thing. Um, transparency. You can also link things. If you've got an infographic that you're going to be sharing digitally, it's really cool then to get more information by linking things. And I can lock it. If I click on this transparency one where it's like little dots, if I click on that, I can actually change the transparency just with this slider. So you can see now it's gone because I've made it zero. I can just make it a little bit visible so that it divides up my section. If I tap away, you can see it better but it's not popping out to attract to the eye. I don't actually want the background to show. I just want it to divide up. And again, you could do that all the way through if that's useful for you. You could divide your whole, um, your infographic into your three to four points and then change the uh, transparency to make it less, less busy, less attention grabbing. And then if I wanna add text in there, I'm just going to go to the text menu on the left 
and I want a little bit of body text. So I'm going to put in body text and it comes up with my little, whoops, body text section. And I'm just going to drag it down to where I want it. I want it in here and I'll make this a little bit bigger so you can see, not that big, sorry. There we go, a little bit of body text. Hopefully that's big enough for you to see there. And I'm going to type in, um, let's work together to keep our lakes, if I can um, clean. Okay, and then I can drag this. And again, watch for the little purple lines to show up to tell me where I want to be. I want this to be centered. So I'm looking for that horizontal line to show up in the middle. Um, and I want it kind of not too far down from the bottom so that it falls off. That looks nice to me. And again, you can kind of just keep playing with things. And notice if I took this and changed the transparency back to higher up, look at, let's see what happens with the legibility of that text. Aha, now I can't see the text at all, but if I go back and make it quite light, it gives me the freedom to use that same blue text, which is that repetition that I've used up here for water, the title. Now, another thing you'll need to know about is, is layers. And this is very common in graphic design programs. We work in layers. You can't do it with paper. You can hint at it by the way you draw things, but digitally we can actually decide whether something's on the top layer or the middle layer or the bottom layer. So this picture in the middle here, this will be the best one to show you with. If I zoom in here a little bit so you can see it. Um, one of my tools here is position. So if I tap on that, you can see that I can bring it forward or I can take it backwards. I can also align it in the page, but because I've aligned it with my other elements, I don't wanna do that. But I do wanna choose whether it comes all the way to the front. And now if you can see, I'll zoom in closer. You can see that this image looks like it's on top of the other image or, and it is on both, both corners, or I can move it, um, or I can move it backward. And now it's just behind this corner. Is there a go back button? Yes, thank yes. you, excellent question. That's that undo. So undo up in the top left. If you're on a computer, you can use the undo button or you can do, and then a redo will show up. Yep, and I love that. Again, digitally, I love how easy it is to just poof, I made a mistake, I wanna change my mind. And you can go back as many steps as you need to, which is really, really nice. Again, on paper, much harder to do. Um, uh, there's also Command Z on computers. We'll do the same thing, I think. Let's just see if that takes that. And then Command Z, yeah. Command Z works. Wait, where is it? The go back button should be up in the top left corner where it says resize, home file resize. There should be an undo button up there. And on mobile, I'll just check on mobile to see if that's different. I think it should be the same. Um, sorry, my mobile is just taking a moment to come up and you can let us know, Agatha, if you were able to find it. It's, um, if I'm working on this one, are you on mobile? Uh, you don't have one. Okay, so go back. Are you working on mobile? Because I'm just looking at that too to see if there's a go where it is on mobile. Um. As you begin to layer or create things, then that's when it will appear. Maybe, I don't, I'm not sure if you've, sometimes it takes a few things for you to mm -hmm. do. Usually after you do like maybe the first okay. um, step. Yeah, and Sharice is frozen, but it could be that um, if you're on a Chromebook, that's good. I was trying to find it there in mobile and it wasn't popping up quickly enough for me, but um, you can, yes, you can also use the keyboard shortcut control Z or command Z. Yep, at the same time. Oh, it deleted the whole thing. Command Y, undo, to go to, to undo anything that you, uh, or to like to put it back, to redo what you undid, try Control Y. So Command or Control, depending on, I guess it would be Control in a Chromebook, hold Control and then press Y and let us know if that works. That's really frustrating. 
and um and I wonder if you have the chat open. It might be, you can drag your chat around. I don't know if you knew that, Agatha, but you can drag the chat window around. Sometimes mine gets hidden uh, by my tools, my Zoom tools or my, yay, yay. I'm glad you got it back, good. Um, sometimes my the buttons or different features are hidden by the Zoom features. So if you've got the Zoom tools, you can drag those around and you can drag the chat around and that will help you um, help you see things sometimes that happens all the time to me i have to like move around all my windows so i can see things so i'm glad you got it back hooray okay um okay so layers in other graphic design tools are actually called layers but here in canva it's called position and you're bringing it forward and backwards. the other thing you can do let's say i've got this water and i um, I've got the font set and I've got the size set. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger because I've got room too. So I'm just going to keep tapping my plus button until I get it where I want it. Okay, that looks nice. And then um, I'm going to animate this as well. Uh, or let's give it an effect maybe. Let's give it a shadow effect. Okay, and then I'm going to animate it with Oh, typewriter. I love typewriter. That's kind of fun. Um, bounce, ascend. What well, would be really fun? There we go. Roll. Did it come down? Yeah, that's kind of fun for water. I was looking for a drip one, but yeah, that'll work. Okay, let's say I'm going to roll it down. Okay, now I have all of this set up and I want to do some text that does the same thing. Maybe I want to say thank you at the end or something. I'm going to do another text box. And I'm going to go over to text. And let's say this time I want a subheading. So I'm going to go add a subheading. Maybe that's for this bigger, um, this bigger third point. Maybe it's a bigger point. And so I want to, whoops, I keep getting my gram really showing up. Let's move off. Okay, I want to move that. Come on, move along with me here. I'm going to move this subheading over above this third point, my third image. And I'm going to put some text in there. Uh, I'm going to say, remember, with an exclamation mark. Okay. And now let's say I want all of those effects that I put on the um, this title. I want them to apply to this one as well. <laughs> That's too funny. Good. And um, so I'm going to go back up to water. And if I like everything that I've set up there, what I can do is I can tap my three little dots and I can copy that style and I'm going to apply it to this text. Now it also put it into, made it too big. So I'm going to make it smaller because of my subheading. So I'm going to tap the minus, but all of the other, um, all of the other style elements that I've set up will apply to this remember, which is kind of fun. So if I tilt this a little bit and move it up, and remember I want that tilt to be 11 degrees, hopefully to match the, the others. It's kind of finicky to get it right in the same spot when you're with a trackpad. 12, oh, 11, excellent, okay. Um, and I might actually move these this image down a little bit. Now did I, good, it's not grouped still, okay. And I'm going to put this remember and move it down. And then it should have the exact same style elements, that role and everything else that I've done. It's going to apply that to this second one. Okay, so let's recap our steps for a minute. So we, first of all, research and identify your three to five points, or if you need to do research, but think about your three to five points. You're going to divide up your infographic either with elements, with colors, with images, and whatever way that you're going to decide where am I going to put my three to five key points? What is this going to look like? How am I dividing it up? And then you start with your text. So we've got some text in here. Now I haven't made my text points yet, so I would use body text to do those and I might put them beside. So I'm going to say body text, and I'm going to move that up. If it will let me, there we go. Move it up beside my first image. And I think what I'm going to do is just copy and paste, like copy that style for the next one so that I can make sure I've got it the same. And what was my first point about um, blue grain algae? It was use phosphate free detergents. 
personal care and household cleaning project products. And is it okay if you have to make zoom in to read some of the text? Um, yes, Katie, that is. Now think about where it is that you're going to share it. So if I tap on this text that I've got, it actually says, if I look up here at the number, it says 20. 20 is actually pretty large. If you're doing something in print, for instance, or even if you think about your school projects, your teachers usually ask you to use font that's size 11 or 12, sometimes 10 if they're younger and they can read it, but <laughs> I prefer 11 or 12. Um, so depending on where you're going to share this, 20 is actually pretty large. And if you were going to print it, for instance, 20 would be large enough. So we have to zoom in right now, like for me to work on this, I have to zoom in. But when I go to share it, I think it would be big enough. So, so that's a good question, but certainly take a look up at the number. If you're using body text that is less than 10, it's going to be too small for people to read. Yeah. So I'm zoomed in just to help me work because I have old eyes. So I'm going to write that was use phosphate free, use phosphate free. Products. And I'm just going to say products now. You could, you could put the whole thing, but you have to think about how much text do I want here? Um, you know, do I want to give that all of that information that I had up here? I'll zoom out to go back up, which was use phosphate-free detergents, personal care, and household cleaning products. Or if this is something I'm sharing digitally, depending on who my audience is, they might know phosphate-free products, or I could link this even to an article, or I can put them right in here, depending on what your purpose is and what you think people need. Um, so I'm actually going to go up and just copy that actually, copy that text because I'm going to be lazy instead of trying to um, trying to type it all, I've just selected it all, I'm going to Command C, and you could do this with text that you've written somewhere else, maybe you've made a note for yourself or a Google Doc, or you're using it directly from the research. In which case, make sure that you cite, um, if you're printing it or using for a project, make sure that you do cite where you got the information. So I'm going to tap in here and I'm going to copy that in. And Can I just also add to yeah. that point, Mary? Yeah. If Also, if you're designing for um, somebody else, remember, you're going to also ask them as well, like, what sort of colors would you like? What type of font maybe would appeal to your particular uh, group of people? And you can also go on the web and look at or go online and look at some other types of um, similar things that people have designed related to your topic, maybe just for some inspiration. You know, you don't want to um, obviously take anybody's idea, but everybody's there to share and, and remix different things. And as Mary said, you would just cite whatever you need to. This is a part of the actual oh. some, something called design yeah. cycle. Thanks, Reese. And I just looked at the time, realized we're actually like at time in. So thank you, Olivia, for your question. So first of all, I'm going to show you quickly how to share your how to share your design, and then maybe I'll pass it over to Trina to tell how to how you want to share it so you can get your 50 points. Um, again, if you want to know any more information, let us know, and we're more than happy to do more. Remember, you're going to divide up your canvas, you're going to put your points in, you're going to think about the design principles, which when you go into Canva, that one that we shared with you is one of the examples of an infographic. So you can find it there really easily. And we might take some time and um, I think we'll add some files to our, our uh, exhibitor page as well so that you can get these. I'll add the, you know, the steps. And thank you, Agatha. Um, to share, you go quickly to download is how you share it. So I'm going to just scroll out. So check, check the exhibitor page that you can see um, some of the resources that we'll add there. To get to share your thing, you go to download and it's going to tell you what you're suggested. Because I have a video, it's saying MP4. If you have something that doesn't have moving elements, you can just do a PDF standard. And um, hopefully Trina is able to have us upload any of them. But if she tells us we can only upload PDF, then you'll want to um, prioritize just digital sharing. Great. Thanks so much, everyone. And I hope I want to see what everybody's created. I'm really excited. Okay. Thanks. And they can also go to share at the top as well. That's also another way to do it. Yeah. That's if you want to collaborate with anybody. Yeah. To view and edit. Yeah. But if you want to actually post it, you'll probably have to download it and upload it. Yeah. Excellent. You can, you can just you. choose there if you want to. Um, not do it as an edit. There's two different options. Oh so. yeah, sorry. That yeah, yeah. You, you just no worries. Just watch. You're right. Just watch. Yeah. yeah, no yeah. worries. Thank yeah. you guys so much for everything.
I'm looking forward. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Trina. Sorry that time flew. <laughs> It did. And I, I was lost in my own um, as well. So I was, yeah, I didn't even realize the time myself. Thank you both so much uh, for walking us through that. And, and like I said, that was my first time using Canva, but it certainly won't be my last. I'm, I'm super excited about this tool. Um, yes, for, for completing your project and submitting it, you can email it to us directly if you in any format at all if you want to do it as a uh, pdf or whether it's a video any of those quite acceptable you email them for girls at wrdc.ca and um we can upload them as well so i'll i'll email you back a link so that it is online for you to share um if you want to share it so it'd be really great if when we email it back to you i don't want to i don't want to post your content if you're not comfortable with that um but i'll give you a link and then you can put it in the chat in feed loop it'll be on the left hand side so that you can share your your creation with everyone else within the stem for girls club and it is again a closed group um and then we'll give you your points when we give you your link as well and perhaps I just wanted to share mine because I had a lot of fun myself. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> time flew by. I think time flies when you're having fun. Uh, let's see if I can yeah. share the screen. I've got a lot happening here. Do, do, do. And Katie, you said you still need to finish. That's okay. You've got till August 5th, I think, to share. If oh, I wow. Oh, very cool. Trina. Nice. Yeah. You do have until August 5th and you have until August 5th to collect all the gamification codes. So I do want to point out some of the, the girls have gotten a lot of gamification Woo! codes right now. And that's oh, wonderful. Awesome. Good for them. Um, but there's no reason why you can't catch up because you've got several more weeks to do so. So this is what I've been working on. Love it. That's so cool. I love the way the font that you've chosen kind of looks really techy and really right? colors yeah. too. It's amazing. Nice. Yeah. And looking at this, nobody would ever know it's someone's for your first time designing it, right? Yeah. It's like yeah. amazing. Did you start from scratch or from a template? From scratch. Yeah, nice. Well done then. Wow. Nice design principle, act, using the design principles. I just wanted mm -hmm. to add that if anybody will add resources, but if anyone has any questions to ask, don't forget to come visit us on Thursday um, in our Q&A because we'll be happy to answer any kind of career questions as well as uh, Canva questions or design questions. Yeah. Yes, thank you for, for reminding us of that. I certainly had, had already forgotten to, to remind everyone. So thank you. We'll, we'll see you both Thursday at one o'clock um, Newfoundland Daylight Time, which is half an hour earlier in Labrador. Um, and you, anyone can put questions in that session in advance for these uh, two wonderful role models, whether it's questions about Canva, uh, about design principles in general, or whether it's um, career related questions. So both of their profiles are up as well. So you can read through their their career profile um, and, and ask questions whether it's about any of those things or something else. Yeah. It was awesome. Great. Right. Yeah. Thanks so much, everyone. That was fabulous. Thank Have you. Have a great rest of day. And um, there are other sessions that went up for technology week. So check those out as well. Signing Wonderful. off. Yeah. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you.